The building control process for new buildings generally ensures that escape routes and compartmentation meet the required fire-resisting standards. Therefore, they should not require extensive evaluation. However, when changes to internal layouts alter the positions of fire-resisting walls and partitions, assessors will need to verify that escape route safety and compartmentation integrity have not been adversely affected. For example, any new construction must not breach compartments or substantially increase escape route distances. The type of construction and materials used in any replacement walls must provide suitable fire resistance. This applies whether the construction is traditional brick, block and plasterboard or a proprietary partitioning system. The fire risk assessor should obtain evidence that partitioning systems, including any glazing, is fire resistant. If evidence is not available, then the assessor needs to take this into account in his overall assessment. Fire resistant glass must only be used as part of a fire resistant glazed system. The glass, glazing seals, beads and fixings are all integral components of any fire resistant glazing installation. Therefore, all components must be compatible under fire conditions and the full system must have been tested. Components from different fire resistant glazed systems must never be mixed. Fire resistant glass should be clearly marked and should show the glass product name and, if required, the safety impact rating. This mark should be visible and legible after installation so that it can be easily checked. In larger modern buildings, floor fire resistance is usually provided by a concrete floor on a steel or concrete framework. Floor fire resistance will have been approved as part of the building control process, so the assessor only needs to look for breaches or damage. Older, smaller and timber frame buildings, however, are likely to have timber joist floors. The fire resistance of these will depend on the existing floor construction, as well as the type of ceiling finish beneath. If there are any doubts about their fire resistance, a more thorough third-party inspection should be organised. Checking ceilings is important, as it is easy for ceilings to be downgraded from the original intended fire rating by, for example, fitting untested downlighters. If ceiling tiles are damaged, they need to be replaced with the correct type, as replacement with tiles from another manufacturer can lead to premature failure in a fire. Other common faults include gaps or holes in ceilings, floor voids between compartments, and hold down clip removed and not replaced following maintenance work behind the ceiling. To avoid fire spread through open ceiling or floor voids in escape routes, it is crucially important that the assessor ensures that walls extend above suspended ceilings to the floor slab above and below any raised floors to the floor slab below. Escape route wall, ceilings and floor linings should be inspected to confirm that they are not flammable. Shown here are typical flammable linings that you might encounter on the wall of an escape route. If wall linings are unsuitable, then consideration should be given to replacing them or adding a flame retardant coating to upgrade their performance. 